Hi, I'm Deb Brown with Savior.Town, and I have the joy to have my friend Erica Pangford from Denton, Texas here. <laughs> oh, you have a wonderful <laughs> husband. So yes, we do know each other, and I've been down to visit her in Denton, and it's a lovely community. Um, tell us what position you're in, and how long you've been there, and what are you doing? So I am just, uh, I am the president of the Denton Chamber of Commerce. And we are just, uh, I've been here one year and two weeks. So celebrated my one year Denton anniversary in quarantine, obviously. <laughs> Denton County is directly, Denton is located directly above Dallas-Fort Worth, right in the middle. We're at the top of what is known in this region as the Golden Triangle. Okay. Uh, for the 35s, we've got Dallas and Fort Worth and Denton. So right at the top in North Texas, we're about 45 minutes from Oklahoma. And uh, right before all this happened, there was a bunch of news uh, where Denton had been named the number two boom town in America, the fourth most recession proof city in America. So we are freaking out right now, if that's true. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it puts some responsibility on you because we've been in this state for close to two months now. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you're most recession proof, I can imagine your businesses are like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> yeah, there has been a lot of, um, so we have been, I would say we have been working from home uh, under a stay at home order for almost a month now. And uh, yeah, that, this is a town that loves its nightlife. There is a lot of, it's, it's a small town, so there's a lot of service industry jobs, restaurants and bars, restaurants and bars. It's also a big music town, so a lot of people just make their money from gigging, and when you can't be in person, it's hard to get paid for gigging. So we immediately saw that, that first week of just shock and panic. You know, like, what are we gonna do? I don't know how my business is gonna stay open. How do I make money if I can't gig? Um, 300,000 people applied for unemployment in one day. So, you know, it was really, the first week was just a mad, probably the first week and a half was probably a mad scramble for resources. And everybody's dealing with spotty internet because the internet hadn't had that many people using it all day long at that rate either. So it was just that, that first week was just a real anxiety ridden time for everyone, businesses, chamber, um, county and city officials. I mean, you remember, it's the same everywhere, right? Yep, it sure is. Um, so at the chamber, did you uh, become um, the resource for people to reach out to or to find your site? to find out the information they needed? Is that what you guys did? Or your, did economic development do that or? Well, we, we sort of, you know how, you know, your, in, your organization looks different from the inside than it does from the outside. Absolutely, yeah. What I've been working on, when I got to this city a year ago, I actually, to be brutally honest, I came into a chamber that had sort of been undervalued for a while in the community and was not very good at telling its story. and frankly, had some broken relationships in the community. So before Corona, we have spent the past year rebuilding our reputation and retelling our story because you all know if you don't tell your story, nobody else is going to tell it for you, at least not in a way that you would want them to. So we've been spending the last year setting goals and um, restaffing and relearning and educating the community about what a chamber is so obviously from the inside we thought you know okay we can do this like get ready people are going to use us as a resource and to tell you the truth we didn't get as many phone calls as we expected hmm. it, so what we did is and we didn't wait for those but we you know we found out over the past few weeks people weren't calling the way we expected them to um, a lot of the pressure on us we probably put on ourselves but we decided early on that we were going to be good community partners. We were going to support the city in the decisions that they made that were best for this community. We were gonna support whatever the county decisions were. Denton is also the county seat. Okay. So in people in this county. So, and while we, and there's also 19 chambers of commerce. Wow. We decided really early on, we were not going to position ourselves as the experts 
because you know we haven't done this be nobody's done this before right we, we didn't even know where the experts were but we knew for sure that we had to be good partners that we were going to be cooperative we were going to point people to resources as best as we could and starting week one again like i said we didn't wait for phone calls we pulled the membership list we gathered five staffers and said we're going to split this list up and start calling excellent that's a great idea so um how's it going working from home <laughs> it's different because you're out and about all the time trying to meet new people in a new town for you it, it really it really is and um my calendar over the past year has been bananas full um i i actually only live three blocks from my office and conceivably i could walk to work every day but the way that chamber people run around with their cars all day long that just wouldn't have been possible so yeah we have pivoted for sure from committee meetings and in-person meetings probably gained 15 pounds this past year because of all <laughs> breakfast meetings and lunch meetings and dinner meetings and happy hours it's a wonder i'm not an addict <laughs> <laughs> record I'm not um, but yeah it, it has been different it's um, zoom was here all the time right this was this wasn't something that was just invented in the last month um, but all of a sudden we're a bunch of old dogs learning a new trick just going we we have we have we don't have a choice we don't have time to be nervous about learning how to do it or have anxiety about I don't know if I can you have to so and you know, and maybe it's part of my personality but when presented with a crisis i tend to rise to it like just i'll panic later i will lose sleep i will go to the bathroom too much all the things that come with anxiety but in the moment it's just always my personality to go okay what is the problem and what can i what sort of solutions can i gather and we will attack that we will freak out later but right now, what is the problem and let's go for it. So I did that with my staff. Where are we at? What resources do we have? Um, fortunately, in our organization, almost everybody already had a laptop, you know, so it wasn't really hard to make that transition to go home. We have, we're supported by a amazing IT company. So we had a few advantages working for us. But since we had that stuff in our favor, we had resources that we could turn to and start shoving those out. This is this is how to connect. This is how to zoom. And I was talking about this with someone yesterday. She said, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't I was terrified to get on a Zoom call because I had never done that before. And I said, none of us have ever done that before. So if we got more than four people in a call, we say, whose first time is it on Zoom? Tell us your most embarrassing Zoom moment so far. Like just there's no rules anymore. Like let's just let's just connect and be real and admit that we're all trudging through this together. There is no example. There's no forged path to follow. I I can imagine that it's really like you said uh, had the the best of you rise to the top of the the people that you work with, the businesses that you work mm -hmm. with, um, yeah. which is great for a new person in town. I mean, I know you've been there a year, but now you're really seeing. Um, who the players are, I guess, is the way to put it. Oh, oh goodness, yes. And and I'll tell you what, like, whether I ever landed in Denton or not, the folks that were already doing business here and the folks that already brought this chamber 110 years so far, they weren't going to let anything, you know, this drastic, you know, they're, they're not going to be knocked down. Human nature is that, you know, it's either come at me what's next or lay down and die and this town is not a lay down and die town so i've really had the privilege of seeing people rally and seeing you know we always say you see people's character rise to the surface in a crisis i can see who the characters are <laughs> it's pretty and, uh, awesome it's, yeah it's been a lot of fun and it's inspiring and it's it's fun to uh see what they're doing and share that with people for example just around the corner from here, there's, like I said, this is a college town. There's a guy who grew up here, uh, went to college here, and decided, you know what, I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna start a business in my own town. And he opened a bar. And then on the same street, he opened another bar because the first one was going really well. And he went, you know what, there's, there's gonna be more bars to come. I'm, I already know how to do this well. I might as well be my own competition. And last year, he opened a third bar on the same street. Wow. So Corona hits. And now he has three establishments full of bartenders who don't have any bar to tend. 
We started a new business in the middle of this and called it Yard Tenders and sent them all out to mow people's grass and pull their weeds and trim their trees. Wow. Yeah. Wow. How brilliant is that? I love it. He's an inspiration to the town and he's been real active on social. And, and on top of it, uh, his wife had a baby like three weeks before this started. So he's got a new baby at home. He's trying to figure out how to keep three businesses afloat. He's someone who's always been real active and well respected in the community. And I can see the other businesses uh, in the downtown area calling out to him on social media. And he's been so generous and he's been sharing all the resources that he's taken advantage of. And, you know, and there have been businesses that are reaching out. There's a, uh, we live upstairs from a restaurant. The restaurant downstairs, which is just a breakfast and lunch sandwich shop, cafe, fantastic brunches. They have a couple of signature dishes that, that you know that are pretty popular in there. They've got some really great quiches, and they're famous for their mimosas. But uh, what they did is the owner thought to herself, "Well, I can get a Benny Keith truck out here five days a week, and people are running to the grocery stores and they're freaking out, and nothing's there, and everything that they can't get, I can have delivered to my door." So if I can't have people in my door, I'm gonna set up a grocery. So she immediately put a marketplace listing up on her website. She got on social media and, you know, and said, here's what we're doing. You can't find it at the store. We have toilet paper. We have paper towels. We will walk them out to your car and put them in the back without ever touching you. Wow. I look out the window and I see all day long cars pulling up and workers in masks and gloves walking boxes out to the backs of the car. I put in an order. I ran downstairs, knocked on the door, picked it up. Regular things, cheese, lunch meat, tomatoes. I didn't have to get in my car. I didn't have to put anybody at risk by walking around the store. So will they continue when it's over? I don't think so. She wants to go back to being a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But seeing the creative moves like that and then watching people share it, because you know what also spreads like Corona? Goodwill, good reviews. <laughs> yeah. Watching people share that out and support each other really has been the thing that we're, we've been pointing to. Uh, people don't need to hear any more scary stories about what the economy might do, or we might never get to go back to normal, or we might have to do a new normal, or oh, the what do we do? In the chamber world, you learn really quickly that business owners are risk takers by nature. Mm -hmm. They yes, don't they do the same thing. They, every day they wake up on the edge and, of their bank account. You know, so they don't need us telling them all the reasons why they might fail or all the scary things that are coming down the road. They need our encouragement. They need our support. They, we had a guy, there's a pretty successful insurance company in town that went and bought a thousand dollars worth of gift cards at the various restaurants who are only doing takeout and delivery because if you're buying gift cards now you're supporting these businesses now and people can go enjoy their time together later but he went and bought a thousand dollars worth of gift cards and offered them out to the employees of various restaurants and bars around town who are now out of work and didn't know where their next meal was coming from so he supported the places that they worked. He supported them with food in their bellies. And so it's stories like that that I don't, the, that's the news we wanna share. Yep, the good news, you're absolutely right. And I'm glad that you've been sharing a couple of these stories with me because that's what I wanna to do too. I wanna to give other communities, um, mm -hmm. just because Ditton's big doesn't mean there aren't a couple of ideas. I love the yard tenders. Um, <laughs> yeah, that small towns can do too. Um, mm -hmm. Bravo to that business owner for reinvesting yeah. in his employees. That's personal yeah. development at its best. And sure. reinvesting in the community too. Um, and there are people that can do that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty awesome. So what do you think the future is gonna look like? There will be no back to normal, that's for sure. No, there'll be, there'll be a new normal. And this conversation is something, again, we've been having with everyone who wants to talk about it. No, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be foolish enough to say it's going to look like this, but we, we understand human nature, right? Um, ultimately, I, th I think we're going to slowly put our toes back in the pool. We're going to slowly start gathering again. But I, I have to tell you, honestly, 
I think that ultimately we're going to choose what comforts us over what scares us. We're going to get back together. We're going to we're going to sit back in restaurants together. We're going to have big events. We're going to hug each other again. I think it's going to take a little while. It, we're we're going to we're going to have to, you know, go in one toe at a time, I think, but honestly and you know, I'm no fountain of wisdom and I'm no psychologist, but as an observer of, you know, the human race these 40 something years, um, <laughs> We're going to ultimately choose the thing that brings us the most comfort, just like we're doing right now while we're locked in our homes and gaining 15 pounds more. Right, right. Comfort you know, ourselves. And eventually right. we're going to get out of our houses and we're going to run into the arms of our loved ones and comfort ourselves there. Yeah. You know, I'm going to, I heard on a webinar the, the other day. <laughs> so what I heard on the webinar the other day, I've been telling everybody because I love it. And uh, this gentleman said, collaboration is the new competition. I thought, oh my God, that's brilliant. Good. People are that working together. And and it's not about competing. It's about no. being human. And those who collaborate the best, those who do that the most effectively will win. And we do like that too. And yeah. our, we want to win. Yeah, we all want to win. But collaborate is, it's the third word in our mission at the Denton Chamber. Our mission is to advocate, educate, collaborate for economic growth in Denton. Brilliant. I love that you can say your mission statement. That's perfect. I love that it's short we enough and it makes sense. We took a lot of words out to make it possible so anyone could say it. <laughs> and that's the way it should be. Well, on this note, thank you for your time today. I'm going to wish you all the best. You know where I am. Reach out and we'll talk some more.